I'm going to make a million people live in one city in Transport Fever 2 and I'm going to try and fix the complete traffic deadlock that's definitely going to happen. I've just upgraded my PC and I'm definitely going to need it for this one. So this is the default city size in Transport Fever 2. This is just spawned in and it has a population of 388 residents. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify the code to the actual game to generate way more buildings just for one city. And this is what a city looks like with five times the population and we're already starting to see some massive tailbacks in car traffic jams 3,000 residents is a million even possible so you can see the traffic is kind of starting to flow somewhat uh, I'm actually gonna have to turn the traffic lights off which I really hate doing because it makes it like really stupid but it does very slightly increase the traffic flow so I am gonna do that I'm so sorry pedestrians you've all just been hit by cars oh my god imagine this is your daily commute oh dear this is an actual nightmare we've already had a collision Terrible. Right, let's make it 10 times. Here we go. As you can see, the traffic is a, uh, a situation. It's, it's not that good. Well, this actually really surprised me. I was expecting this to be impossible and the LRTs are really holding up. I mean, these guys are carrying this whole city pretty much. So what I did basically, I drew a line through the three zones that the tram needs to get to. So we've got commercial, residential and industrial over here. And basically the light rail network is as direct as physically possible. Whereas the roads go on a bit of a tangent because over here, as you can see, the cars can actually not cross over the tracks. Now, this is for tram efficiency. They have to go around the back streets, of course. This means the flow of the traffic is actually really good. Uh, I was expecting this to be completely gridlocked, but it's running quite fine. And this is with traffic lights as well. So very nice, but it's not quite enough. Let's double it 20 times. Oh, it's, it's getting big now. Oh my God. Wow, look at the size of that thing. That is huge. This is 20 times. Let's see the actual monumental amount of traffic that's gonna be spawning in in just a second. Let's have a look. Here comes the tsunami. Oh my God. It's getting so big. That's what she said. This is now really getting crazy with the amount of people. I cannot imagine how a million people is going to look. Will it even load the game? I don't know. Let's find out. So I did actually get a chance to finish this one. There's quite a lot of traffic still. I mean, I fixed quite a lot of it with the uh, the subway I built, but uh, I may have accidentally made a, a little bit more of a problem, which means I can't actually build any more due to... Uh, yeah, <laughs> quite a few people waiting for the bus here. So let's move it up. And I can't believe I'm seeing this to 1 million people living in the city. This is only half. I can't believe this is only half. This is actually insane. If you guys are enjoying this video so far, make sure to press subscribe. It really helps me out. And let's jump to 1 million citizens. Well, this is it. A million people. I have spent so long. Literally, it's been more than a week right now of me editing this city to get it to actually run a million people. But here it is. It went through many iterations, as you can see, but it actually runs really well. As you can see, we have 1 million residents right here. Before I show you the actual city with all the people in, which by the way, is absolutely insane. The game runs on like three FPS and that's not even exaggerating. Uh, let me show you the actual city design without all the people in it, just so I can actually run the thing. We are currently running 120 FPS, which is just a little bit better than uh, three. Um, but uh, here's the city. So what have we got planned here? So there's sections of the city that I've done like this in a sort of triangle pattern, and they all push towards the center. And then the center goes straight out. But as you can see, I've noticed I've actually elevated the center of the city. And there's a good reason for this. Buildings cannot be generated on bridges. Now at the center of the city is obviously a hotspot for buildings. And if there's massive buildings in the city center, there'll be thousands of people on the streets, which is not good. So instead I did it like this, a little elevated thing. And this this hooks up to the rest of the city. Obviously travel times aren't that good because if you want to get like from a house from here let's say uh, and you want to go over to your friends over here instead of going down the road like this you would actually not be able to go this way because the road doesn't connect which I'll explain in just a sec. You would instead you would go up this road down here and then onto that one. So it's not quite as direct but the trade-off for that is actually having these things not be connected and only be connected as you can see here with the little tendrils means that people can actually transfer through this road but not cars and that's good because if you get a road and drag it across you can actually see that over here we have these crossroads but over here we do not have these now this is very good for the trams the biggest problem at the minute with the trams having a million people is that all these people on the road means the trams just cannot move so having it like this means they'll actually stick mostly to one side of the street unless they physically have to cross like have to at that second uh, which means the trams have a, a lot of a smoother time they're still terrible in terms of how fast they go but uh, they are much smoother now i've also got a bus line that goes down into the center of the city and then i've got like sort of a, a mini transfer sort of thing they're all in close proximity tram stops there's six tram lines that go through the middle 
and they all intersect at this main point, which is where obviously the center of the city is, there's lots of people there. The best thing to do in this circumstance is literally just split everything up as much as you can. If you have everything bunched together, you're gonna really get bogged down. This is an underpass right outside the tram stop, and this underpass goes down to line one and two. And if we just hop aboard one of these trains here, which is actually a light rail, you can see we actually have these trams underground. I have two of these hooked up to each other and these go to the underground train stations where they can pick lots of people up and get them very quickly. That's the beautiful thing about LRTs. They accelerate extremely quickly and that's very useful for a situation like this. And that's how I set it up and now's the fun bit. Let's kill my PC. <laughs> Here we go. Obviously you can see that I actually despawned all the buildings unless you go really close proximity. This means that the game can actually run. So uh, sorry for the visual annoyance, but uh, there wouldn't be a video without it. So anyway, let's zoom in and have a look. So this is with 1 million citizens. This is the outskirts of the city. In fact, we can go even further outskirts. Let's have a look here. So this is like the quietest road I could find. Uh, there's uh, just a couple of people here. Anyway, center of the city is looking brilliant. We can actually put this thing in three times speed, but you'll see this is three times speed as you can see down here, but not much is really happening. And uh, it is happening. It is happening. It's just, let's wait for it. Let's see how long it takes. There we go. <laughs> what the? Yep, that takes a, a, a good 10 seconds to do anything and then freezes immediately. Uh, but yeah, this is a million people. I cannot believe I actually made this work. Uh, the traffic flow is really good as well, like, like really good. There's no traffic jams pretty much whatsoever, which is super, super nice. If you guys have any super cool saves, but you're struggling with traffic, let me know in the comments and I will check out personally some of your guys' saves and maybe, maybe make a video about fixing them. And if you enjoyed this video, you're definitely going to want to watch this video here, which shows you exactly how to optimize your game so you can run crazy things like what I'm doing right now, which will help any Transport Fever save get more frames. Check it out.